And welcome to our podcast, Geeks Are Wired, where we talk about video games, movies, TV, comic books, technology, and TLDR, the Internet of Things. And this week, we have Alex. Hey, everybody. And you can find his stuff on robovdino.com. That's right. I'm uh, working on a video game that's going to get a Steam release next spring. It's a uh, it's a video game where you're a robot that's unreasonably angry at dinosaurs. You collect stuff, you throw it at the dinosaurs, knock them out, pick up the dinosaurs, and you throw them on a boat. And possibly other things that you throw them on. Well, there you go. I feel like it's perfectly reasonable rage. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. Well, so you're not killing the dinosaurs. You are just transporting them. That's right. That's right. Well, I, I don't know. There's a question. If you take a dinosaur and you submerge yourself in the water, like you regenerate, but what happened to the dinosaur? Are yeah, they alive? Fine. They, they're strong swimmers. There you go. <laughs> that's, that's too kid-friendly, Alex. They, you can't... they do. They, they swim dino-style. I like that. <laughs> dinosaurs. Yeah, exactly. Dogs weren't around when uh, the dinosaurs were around. So they, had, they, had, they called it dinosaur style before doggy style. Dogs ripped yep. off dinosaurs. It's true. It's true. I do wonder how the T-Rex managed to do it. Because you, you think that with the, you know, there's no way to really grasp the, the female with the short claws. Because dogs, they kind of wrap their... Their paws around. Uh, we're, talking, we're actually talking about swimming, but uh, keep going. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So just saying. It, it seems oh, wait, hard. Uh, me and Bill both said uh, doggy style. I think we both meant uh, um, uh, doggy, paddle. doggy paddling. Oh, yeah. that's so, right. Yeah, the dino paddle. That's what I meant. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you're right. Not... So uh, okay. point to Jordan. Uh, me and Bill are idiots. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. I, Jordan went off in another direction. We went off the swimming direction. I think. I, I, think, I, I know what you meant, Bill. And, and our listeners probably had no idea. Uh, I, just, I just have a filthy mind. I, if, uh, I don't apologize. If you want to side with either Jordan or uh, Bill, call us at 801-236-4566. Uh, uh, extension 55. <laughs> nope, it's 801-896-4335. It's not a 555 number? No, 4335. Okay. It's just geek. I wanted to see how Hollywood this was. I don't know. And, and Alex, if you're wondering, it's in that show note. Oh, yeah, there it is. You know, right top. Yeah, <laughs> I was like... <laughs> you can make the argument that dino paddle is stylish, so is uh, dino style dino paddle. There we go. Yeah. True that. That's what I was thinking. I know it didn't quite sound right when I said, like, this doesn't sound right. It's coming out of my mouth. And it's been said now <laughs> and recorded. And then it'll be published, and then other people will hear it. That's right. It's, it's your legacy, Bill. I know. It, it might be the name of this podcast now. The episode. Not the podcast. Dino the Style or Dino Paddle? I like Dino Style. And maybe, I, dino Style sounds a little better. Paddling with the dinosaurs. Paddling. <laughs> that was actually not too bad. During last week's uh, title was your was all you, your title. Oh yeah, my my. Oh, a force yeah. to be reckoned with. I was I was in my punny mood. Well, it did turn into a good. I had to you know, create that image. I was kind of altering, getting ideas. But did you see the image? I did not. Every episode has its own image. Now you gotta. It'd probably be easier just to pull it up and instead of online, actually pull it up in the thing. But okay, well, we'll figure out the name of the podcast. How about a bit? I pull it up for. Oh, is that really it? Oh, it's that would make it easy. Um, if for listeners, if you want to go look at it, go to our website and or go to our <laughs> Facebook page. <laughs> yep, it I took like some that. time to edit, but. I need to get better at Photoshop. Yeah, 280. That's a very good way of putting it. I know. <laughs> okay. Uh, what? Let's see. What else do we have? We have... Let's start off with this. 
PlayStation 5 has been... Oh, wait, no, I, I'm totally skipping. We have a Jordan. We didn't even, like, finish introductions. Uh, that's true, yeah. I've been alleged to be the human embodiment of DNA origami. Alleged by myself. And you can be found at Jordan. Jordan is awesome sauce. I like to think so sometimes. Sometimes. Dot awesome sauce dot sauce. That's the site. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find me there. Okay. Dot gov. Ah, oh, there you go. Naturally. <laughs> naturally. Of course. That's, I wouldn't be in any dot info site or dot biz site. It has to be dot gov. Uh, it's well researched. Actually, I've been working on some stuff, so Dot we biz? might have nice. a new. Yeah. <laughs> I hear they're pretty reliable. Yeah. Domains. Yeah. Trustworthy. There's, there's plenty of them. Yeah. Just not dot org. Yeah. Those are those are like the the classic late '90s, early 2000s of. Can you not afford a real one? No. <laughs> they're an organization. Of course they can't. Of course. They're usually free. They just mm-hmm. got money. Yeah. Oh, then there's me. I'll send you to myself. Bill. Hey, Bill. How's it going? It's awesome. Awesome sauce? Awesome sauce. I like to hear that. <laughs> exactly. And apparently, I'm not just a Bill, but I become a law at 2 o'clock in the morning. But that's for different news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Don't make me depressed. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we'll go back to what I was talking. Uh, what started go- talking about uh, for introductions was PlayStation Five has been announced, and so they were up until PlayStation Four, like so waiting seven years for releasing the new one, then waiting ten years for life of console to put out the new um, or before they they end the console. So. PlayStation 4 was originally released in North America back in 2013. Oh, yeah? Yes. So if they're going to stick to their seven-year... Like, so if we t- says PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4 time period, because 3 is still kind of around. They're, not, they're keeping its life alive. They haven't fully killed it. 4 did come out a couple years later. Uh, but them announcing it, it's been four years... So the fact that it's going to come out somewhere between 2018 to 2020. <laughs> yeah, somewhere there. <laughs> yeah. You know, Bill, this will create a huge dilemma for lots of people because they'll have to ask themselves when they get this new console whether they want to put it high or put it low. Do they want a high five <laughs> or a low five? It's good. <laughs> Lots of arguments are going to break out. I think that friendships will... People will question things. I, I'm just going to demand a 10. <laughs> yeah, get two of them. <laughs> PlayStation, give me some skin. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, sorry guys. <laughs> I was like, where are you going with this? <laughs> I approve, still. Thank you. <laughs> I've got surprised they. Uh, I guess it makes sense that they, they do announce announce or at least confirm that there's going to be a follow up system. But I like I I don't know if there's like a benefit. Like I gotta wonder what the benefit is for doing that. Because like every time like a new console is announced, it feels like everybody just want doesn't want to like buy like the current gen system. And they just re- they're where they're getting ready to release a new one, right? Yeah, and I mean the PS3, like that. I I ended up buying one of the slim PS3s because, like, it, like it's about the time the PS4 is already out. But I needed like a new PS3, and like all my games are PS3, so I ended up buying it just because the PS4 wasn't backward compatible and there weren't any games I wanted for it. But I, I gotta wonder, like, what that's gonna do to like a PS4's VR. It's it, like, is does that mean it's just gonna be like the PlayStation Move on the PS3? Like they, they invest all this money into like making this technology, and that's like, oh. We well, got this new console. It doesn't support it. Um, it's just gonna go away. Well, you think they wouldn't support it on the new console? Well, I mean, they didn't for the PlayStation Move, did they? Well, yeah, but I but they're throwing so much money into VR right now that if they were to move forward and with a more powerful console and not support VR with such a more powerful console, I feel like it would become. 
Well, it would have a new, it would be built on a new engine and everything more powerful and everything. But of course, I don't see them throwing away VR. Uh, but yeah, compatibility issues. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know how that works. Oh, so I, I will, once again, uh, 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 just like totally told a lie. Uh, apparently, the PS4 does support uh, the PlayStation Move. So I guess they didn't like oh. it, completely sweep around the rug. So yeah, never mind. That uh, there, the, the there's like no reason to believe the VR is going to be at risk. Uh, okay, yeah, that, that makes way more sense because, as you both were saying, they invested a lot and vr is going to become more of a thing as it becomes more advanced i forgot they did yeah you're right they did go with the move they just because they were kind of competing with the connect but they didn't force it on their consumers like microsoft did yeah it's just like this uh like side project which i mean sony yeah. sony like tip sony loves doing stuff like that and they'll uh, it's so, yeah, weird that, it's so weird that they'll dump all this money into like weird side projects that are usually like well fleshed out and work pretty well, but then just don't do anything with it. So I guess that's not that weird to see Sony announce, hey, we've got the uh, Sony like put all this funding into uh, a VR system this is for this console. And then, oh, yeah, here's a new console. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's yeah. not that weird. While we were talking about it, I realized I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to VR. A new engine, that's, engines are for games, not for consoles. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah, Alex, sure. correct me if I'm wrong, but engines have nothing to do with consoles. It's it's yeah, pretty much. I'm, I mean, the, okay. the engine just powers to give it a video game. It's the engine for a video game, like a like a Vroom type engine. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, they're also going to have the support for the VR games and stuff like that. Uh, so what they all the extra pixels and well, see, look of the game and everything. This is exciting um, information because at least it lets me know that I was rightly aware that I didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> so, well, it's your, turn to, it's your turn to talk out your butt. Yep. Hey! Just make up words. Put okay. words together, call them good. Yeah, it's, it's so, still weird that, like, uh, that, that uh, Sony announced that to me, but I guess it fits their plan, so I, I guess it just isn't that weird. I, I, personally, I, I just every time Sony announces a new announces a new console, I just don't really care. Like Sony doesn't make exciting consoles; it's just that they have really great software on them. Mm -hmm. Like until games are announced for the PS5, like that's uh, it's not like when Nintendo or like when Sega would announce a new system because those ones are always like, "Whoa, the, what crazy thing are they going to do this time?" But ever since like the PlayStation One and like the the original Xbox, it's like. It's a thing that's optical media and it plays video games. Mm -hmm. Like they haven't changed that formula at all for any of the consoles. Like the most, the, the closest they ever did was the Kinect came standard with uh, w with the Xbox One. And but. they're out of sequence too, because who knows? This may the next one might be Xbox Six. It, yeah. it could go there. <laughs> they're like, why not? Or Infinity, or Infinity Plus Six. But it, 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 has anyone ever checked? Is in the Infinity symbol really just eight really drunk and fell over? Yeah, yes. that's actually how it happened. <laughs> it was, eight got drunk and fell over. Yep, but, the Egyptians were kind of looking at it and they're like, "Yep, Infinity." Mathematicians are just like trying to figure out like a, a way to calculate Infinity by just like pouring beer on, onto numeral eight and hoping for the best. Yep. Actually, I think early mathematicians really had to be intoxicated to cope with life <laughs> because, you know, Egyptians, they had a hieroglyphic for every single number. It wasn't base 10 or base 60 like the Babylonians. It was, it was just they had a hieroglyphic for everything. Yikes. Yeah. And so Seems if like you wanted to have 976... There is a specific hieroglyphic you had to memorize for that. There's lots of work. Maybe it's, one of those, maybe it's like one of those things that like uh, when you're in school and like your teacher would want you to uh, write like a like a five page essay. Like you would like double and a half space it and like put like <laughs> extra wide margins on it. Like just to make sure that they pad out with hieroglyphs on their like their slates. They turn to their teachers. They just invented all these extra hieroglyphs for numbers. <laughs> Look, it filled up the entire page. This one number. It's like what the scribe class did. Like they didn't want to. Like they just didn't want to have to deal with like the pharaoh, like with like the pharaoh's like absurd requests for long for like long book reports. So they would just like fill out these massive slates. 
That's right. Just banging, pounding angrily on their tablet. <laughs> and on page, <laughs> uh, page chicken and a biscuit duck, um, <laughs> you will find, I, I guess they would, I, well, no, they had papyrus. They, they, I guess they would have books. They could have books. Never mind. I was going to say that they would have books, but. Well, it depends on what, because Egypt or ancient Egypt was spanning thousands of years, like 2,000 years. That's true. 3,000 years. No, 3,000 years, I think. I don't know. It, it, it lasted a long while. It was a while. Yeah. And so they, they spanned the writing um, format or forms. It's like they, they started with their tablets and they went with, um, was it? Uh, uh, well, eventually. Oh. Uh, there, there's some intermediaries. Oh. It's, it's like, um, I think, wax tablets and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm also they're kind of just like really that. inefficient office supplies, just so the scribe class can just keep <laughs> their jobs. And then someone shows up with like with like rice paper and like Arab numerals, and the the, the pharaoh just killed off the scribe class. I like to believe the pharaoh had his own like servant who served as a a writing tool, like a guy Pierce, but he just tattooed his his writing material on and <laughs> just well I, i'm starting to think like the, the ancient egyptians are more like the music industry it's like we, we have these you know uh wax cones that played music then we made records and then and then we turned it into digital cassettes or i guess there was four tracks then eight tracks then cassettes <laughs> was there a 16 track i don't know then we have the CDs. I, I don't know. What's, what's even inside of an eight track is it is it tape or is it like a is it what what's tape. inside yeah, of it? It's, it's magnetic. It's yeah, yeah, it's still, it's. But is a, it tape? Yeah. Okay, I've I've always wondered that. Like I I pick every time I picked one up, I'm like, I I, I don't know how this thing works. It looks it looks like a NES cartridge, but it's kind of heavy. <laughs> yeah. No, I guess yeah, like it, an Atari it, cartridge. They're they're a little more blocky than that, but. Yeah, you know, like and four tracks in nature. They just they, they were getting as cassettes were coming. You know, for between four track and. Cassettes. We just got better at cramming more information into the little tape strips, the magnetic strips. Just you know, like CDs and DVDs and Blu-rays. We got better at cramming more information into these little pieces of plastic. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Well, it's the frequency of light. It holds more information. Ah. Blue is good. <laughs> oh, with the PlayStation Five though, I love. I don't know, Alex. Did you open up the show note link? web page uh no i, no, I, I love I didn't notice that there. every time there's a new playstation announced there's like look here is a beta for what it's going to look like and what the new controller is going to look like okay the console is going to look different I'll yeah, they, always, that. they always do these mock-ups and it's like wow that looks really cool when it comes out no it's going to be the same exact controller that sony's oh, yeah. always oh. used and it's just going to be another black box mm-hmm it's, well, yeah, well, Sony, uh, so, like Sony's console business is, we, we make a very practical console, and you make good software for it. Like yeah. that—that's that's what they do. Like the most exciting, co- like piece of hardware they've ever made was the PlayStation Three, and that's just because it had like card readers in the front. Yeah, I mean, there isn't like a new optical format coming out that anyone needs. Like, a, I mean, Blu-ray coming out for the PS Three, that was that was serendipitous. Uh, PS Two. And DVD, hey, that worked out great too. Cheap DVD player, PlayStation CD player, that was great too. And uh, PlayStation Four is like, yeah, it's Blu-ray again. PlayStation Five, I mean, everyone streams, so yeah. I mean, like, they may even just like kick out the, uh, uh, just like get rid of like physical media altogether, or maybe like switch <laughs> to Flash. So, Alex, I don't stream. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're going to keep re- they're going to keep like uh, retail for uh, for like video games, but like for video, I won't be surprised if Sony's like it doesn't need a it doesn't need an optical. It's too expensive. Or even wait, because we've gotten back to the time period. The, the I one of the reasons why I think Nintendo went back to the cartridge is that storage uh, ability is cheap again. We did we you know went away from it because it was getting so expensive compared to CDs, and now it's really cheap compared. How much information does a Switch cartridge hold? I, I'm not sure. It's it's. It's substantial. It's like yeah. more. It's like uh, up there with like Blu-ray. And really, yeah, yeah it's no, like sixty-four uh, gig or something. And you can store terabytes mm-hmm. on a thumb drive. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's that's basically what it is. And I'm not talking like a terabyte. I'm talking like multiple of, and depending on uh, even the uh, actually the SD cards. Mm-hmm. If you do um, 
SDXC. Mm -hmm. It uh, uh, transmits at I think one point five meg a second. It might be it might be faster than that, but you can store up to two terabytes on that card. One point. Oh no, that that seems like a slow method to transfer information because that's how, how, apparently one of the faster ones. Is it because I don't know meg per second? It'd take a uh, thousand yeah. seconds to transfer yeah, yeah, a terabyte. I think I was off on that. So yeah. I, I just looked it up in uh, Blu-ray. A single layer is twenty-five gig, and a dual layer is fifty gig. Mm. And there's like also like a Blu-ray. Uh, uh, Blu-ray disc XL, which uh, I don't know if it, like if it's a physically larger disc or what, but apparently it'll hold up to 128 gig. The uh, the current Nintendo Switch cards, like the largest size they've got now, is 32 gig. So they're kind of right in the middle there for uh, what Blu-ray capacities are. But uh, most video games are under like uh, are under 30 gig these days. I, I know like that sounds li li that sounds like oh only. But I, I mean, in terms of like, in terms of like expanding its size, I, I won't be surprised if Nintendo will eventually like bump that out a little bit. I mean, that's like right now the thirty-two gigabyte, but like, but toward the end of like the DS lifespan, they went from like two meg up to up to like you know two hundred fifty-six meg. So I, I won't be surprised if so if Switch uh, if the Switch like eventually support like very huge cards. It really seems like compression algorithms must be getting progressively better. Well, I mean, really a lot better because I remember when Metal Gear Solid 4 came out, it um, received attention for filling up an entire double layer Blu-ray disc. Oh, you mean 4? Yeah, number 4. And so 5 also. And uh, That one was, they, they did like 7.1 audio for it, and that game had so much dialogue in it. Like I mean, the 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 audio is what makes those makes those games so big. Okay, so I found out the speed to the sizes. Okay, so the regular AR SD card transfers at twenty five meg a second. Mm, that sounds reasonable. SD HD is one hundred and four megs a second. That's really fast. SD XC transfers at three hundred and twelve meg a second. Wow, yeah, that's that's pretty incredible. You can transfer an entire terabyte. Of content and just over three seconds. Right. Uh, three hundred megs per second. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, that, that'd be a that'd be a gigabyte. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Like, terabyte. Hey, terabyte yeah. is a thousand gigs. That's yeah, right. I, okay. Okay. There, there's technically an argument with that. 10, okay. Yeah. 10, so 56. never mind. <laughs> I have to modify okay, my it, my. Okay, but ten fifty what ten fifty six or even if we're gonna simplify. Well, it'd be one, around 1, over three thousand yeah seconds. Yeah, which is yeah that's what thirty minutes to do the entire or thirty. What? How much would that be? <laughs> yeah, I need to calculate. If you know the answer, call in at eight zero one eight nine six four three three five. No, no context. Just blurt out the answer and hang up. <laughs> Thousand three hundred. Okay, fifty. You sure? Fifty something. It's still pretty good. It's, it's still pretty yeah, cool. It is. That, uh, it is exactly fifty. Yeah. See, even like minutes. even though math or arithmetic, I suck at it. I I sometimes can do it. And so, a standard SD card has capability range of one twenty-eight meg to two gigs. Uh, SDHC four gigs to thirty-two gigs, and XC is 64 gigs to 2 terabytes. Okay. So, yeah, I, I, it's pretty cool that, like, the, the flash storage is getting so cheap because we can't get away from optical. Because I, I, optical's got, like, uh, it It sort of just moved the goalposts back for the problem with uh, with uh, uh, magnetic storage as a media. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm kind of glad that, that we can, like, go toward that. And it's not like the... There have been, like, concerns about, like, how long flash storage can last and like and like how durable it is uh, like that's been like a huge concern of like uh, especially like the retro game community but hi it's kind of like a, a the difference is like the uh, the quality because like if you buy like a crappy jump drive yeah like you basically look at it wrong it's gonna die but like compact flash cards 
from like the early 90s, they're like still running just fine. Like they aren't having any problems. They're just like, you know, they, they hold 32 megs. So nobody uses them. And it's the and same thing with like optical media. Optical media is like really poor quality. Uh, optical media of like really poor quality degrades really easily, especially from like UV. But, and there's also like really high quality, there's really high quality media out there. So I think it's like kind of a, I think if like the, if we go toward like the flash storage, we're just going to get like better speeds and not really suffer any consequences of like switching over to this media. Okay. Other than like there's, other than we can put, get away from optical games, which the consoles themselves that play them are going to start breaking down someday. And there's really not a way around that. Yeah, like the Nintendo. <laughs> no, the and- NES. Nothing it, it will break down one day. I promise. Everything breaks down one day. We break down one day. So, yeah. Eventually. The NESs will stop, finally stop working one day. One day. And then you, you'll blow it out. And then it will continue working. And then you'll pass it on to your grandchildren. And then they, they may have to solder some pieces. And... <laughs> and the, nice thing about those is like, the nice thing about those consoles is they Nintendo like let the patents expire didn't like pull a Disney and like fight the patents on like the NES and SNES. So there's like clone consoles coming out now. They're kind of like these, uh, like these boutique efforts to make like really high quality, like archive grade. Uh, kind of like how they do with like turntables, like how you can spend like $500 on a turntable. If you want to play like your yellow submarine record that you bought at like Spencer gifts. Yeah. Like they're doing the same thing with like, with like NES and like SNES now, like there's like super, ridiculous quality like SNESs and NESs coming out that are like kind of built to kind of last last for eternity more so than the classics <laughs> oh yeah like th- these were like th- there's like an NES that came out that's like made out of like a block of aluminum and has like an HDMI out on it <laughs> like there basically aren't like analog parts on like it's all solid state electronics and uh l- like has like a way better built uh cartridge slot on it than the original Ah, okay. I also want to put a picture in the show notes. It looks the thing looks really silly, and it is it's it is also equivalently silly to pay like five hundred dollars for an NES. I gotta confess that one of the first things I did when I got my first cartridge game for Switch Zelda was I was I was actually pal my my heart was palpitating. It was I mean more than usual, fortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, it was and a good kind of palpitating. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty excited. And the first thing I did is I pulled the cartridge out and then I tossed it on the ground. And I was like, "It's pretty nice because it's durable." Mm-hmm. I remember those days, and they're back. There you so. go. Especially the way they put it in the the box, you kind of like you have to get your finger in, and it kind of pops it out. And you're like, "Ah, oh, I'm good, I'm good." <laughs> yeah, no, it's exciting. I licked I, it also. I kind of gave it a good licking. How's it taste? Um, it tasted like. A cartridge, really. Okay. Uh, I, I think that there's no real change in how previous cartridges t- tasted. I in thought I current... licked it, and I thought it tasted weird last time. But it's been like a while since I licked the cartridge. Huh. I forgot now. Oh, no. I, I thought you got you blew on it. Um, <laughs> I I have blown on it. Okay. I didn't need to. I just wanted to. It's just it's just that classic feeling. Of, uh Yeah, it was a pretty good sensation. That was a good afternoon. No. <laughs> Hadn't even played the game, but that alone was the good afternoon. <laughs> well, that that was a good preamble to the good afternoon, and then I played the game, and it became a great yeah. afternoon. Because so it's I'm Zelda. I'm pondering about getting Skyrim for it. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I decided to with because of Alex's recommendations. I have gotten a few games that have been entertaining. Mm. There's the new Mario game, and d- oh really? Have yes. you- how far into that are you? Uh, I wandered around a lot. I own all of the items, lit all of the <laughs> things. It's, it's I'm a... not very far. I can guarantee that. Oh, but I have uncovered all the rocks and knocked off and cleared off all the the debris. You like to clean stuff up. You get points for it. <laughs> for cleaning. Yeah, the Ghost Mar- Kingdom right off the bat. Ghost Hat Kingdom. Oh, you yeah. start knocking off. All, you start like. Throwing off oh yeah, you get your your coins. I guess. Yeah. Well, you get coins, but also at, at the very end, you kind of get that achievement. Doodle do. I don't remember. Huh? Yeah, there are so many achievements in that game. Yes, it's over eight hundred. And I got Splatoon two. Hey, I haven't played that one yet. Hmm. Neither have I. It's a good one. Oh yeah. 
And I also got, since I have an extra remote, I got a charger for everything, too. So I don't have to worry about yeah. having a, a, one set of good remotes and one set of dead remotes. It's always a damper on your gaming addiction where you just want to play an unhealthy duration of games. Mm-hmm. Like, you just want to keep going on even though it damages your body. Yeah. But then the the power, like the the batteries, the controls are lose power. Yeah, yeah. it's like a signal that you need to actually engage in a healthy activity, and you don't want that to happen. What do you mean? I'm already jumping up and down, and you know, to, to spin my hat around and like make thing. I have to swing my arms around like I'm a you know flailing crazy. It's true. Man. I'm sure you have very <laughs> strong forearms at this point. That's it is good exercise. Must Talk- must put the strap around so you don't like throw them into the. Uh, well, I've been listening to um, Scientific American, and they're talking about how um, exercise from video games is one of the best kind of exercises you can have. That may or may not be a fact. But, I was going to uh, say, what are, what are they based it on? Mm-hmm. Like, just, out, just out of curiosity, I, I, I don't have a stake in it. One, one can accuse me of basing it on pure fabrication. Well, like, that would be a fair accusation. Oh, so the Scientific did, American didn't actually write an article on that. That's That may be true. I okay. will not d- confirm or deny. Okay, so I do have to... Shout admit. out to We Fit. It's, uh, I'm, I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of sad that the like the only way We Fit is like still going is there's a cool Smash Brothers character based off the We Fit trainer. Oh, uh, yeah. Is it a fit character? Oh, yeah. She's, uh, she's like, a uh, super fit. And she, if, like, there's, like, this great piece of, like, uh, uh, Street Fighter fit like a Street Fighter tribute art that came out recently that like called back to like a piece of Smash art or maybe the other way around that's uh, making the rounds. Like people love We Fit Trainer on uh, oh. the Smash. Like she's and like the, one of the characters that like the uh, the the um, pro players use. You no, know, in the sixties they would have called her a Fit Fit. I'm just saying they would maybe a British. No, no, now you uh, wear those Fit. Yeah. Oh, I do remember. Yeah, the we. Uh, okay, at least they lost the Wii Fit, tr- you know, from advancing the console. I had the Xbox Fitness uh, app on my console, my Xbox with the Connect, and you know, it was like, no, you have to like, unlike the Wii Fit, where it's like you stand on the block and you're like, okay, I see you not putting the pressure. The Connect would be like, I see you cheating. Hmm. No, you are not. Those do, those push ups do not count. You do not go low enough. Or your, your your jumping jacks aren't real jumping jacks. You're just kind of flailing your hands and hoping it counts. So the Xbox, was, it helped, and it was fun. And then they said, thanks for buying all those upgrades. We're not supporting this anymore, and we're going to pull it. For, uh, any, we're going to completely pull it out of the entire thing. It's pure crushing disappointment. Well, especially where I, I have it installed. That's You're the other invested. thing. You're invested. Well, no, I, I have it physically installed on my console, mm. and I cannot... Turn it on. You can't become fit. Well, I can't even, like, I don't even care about, like, updating to the point system and all that. Though it was kind of fun to be like, hey, my friends and me. You know, it was just like, I I can't even turn this thing on anymore now. I'm, it was it was kind of motivational. Well, I have to admit that I'm somewhat, I'm 99% focused, but there's a 1% question in my mind. Alex, what character was it that was the, the was it Princess Peach? From uh, what? The the um the fit thing. Her. Sorry. Oh, okay. Oh this yeah. Character. That I'm character. Like, that's why I pulled it up. I wasn't sure what you were talking about. I didn't notice. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Oh I like it up. who the character was? Oh yeah, the, the, she's her own thing. Yeah. Did, there there's also like there's also like a dude that uh Yeah, I see the But he he kind of just like fell by the wayside. Oh. So they only brought the the female in for Smash. Bros. Super Smash Bros. That's funny, though. But I think I remember that with the commercial. Um, you know, she's like, ah, yeah. We're trying to, like, win. I don't know. <laughs> I remember the commercial vaguely. They should really call her a uh, Wii Fight Trainer at this point. Because, like, I think more people have, exposed, have exposure to her as a character in Smash than uh, as, a, like, a character in Wii Fit. Mm-hmm. No, I object to her figure. Actually, I think that it's it gives a bad impression to the audience. High expectations. I, I do think it's funny. Like her, she's giving poses to 
like all these other characters. Like everybody, do yoga poses. I mean, yeah, that's her, and that's her, her shtick. She does yoga. Yeah. No, I think it's the Barbie doll problem. And she does like yoga all day. But, yeah, but yeah, if she's like, she I mean, is, like, imagine like if imagine if like we fit like had just like Wario go out there like man, let's do some push ups, <laughs> and then, like well, his yeah. heart that's the size of a canned ham just like pops out of his throat and he just dies, he just drops dead. You have to call an well, ambulance instead of staying on the bounce board doing yoga. That's encouraging because then you know you can do better than that, and so it's proper motivation with her. You're like. Why bother? She's already way better than I can ever be. Look, she her weight is only five arrows. Five out of ten arrows. That's that's that seems and her recovery is a full eight arrows. My experience with Wii Fit was she was very encouraging. Because there was like go. she's always like, uh, oh you did a good job with that uh with that uh um like I don't know, handstand or whatever you did. She doesn't seem very emotive. How can you find encouragement? You know, it's it's kind of weird. The, in the first version of Wii Fit, like the version that if anybody ever played it, is probably this version. They they have the Metal Gear thing where their mouths don't move, and it's <laughs> it's really kind of upsetting. Uh, but like in the Wii Fit for uh, for uh, Wii U, they fix that. I, I don't know why Nintendo is like, hey, let's do the Metal Gear thing and just like ha- not have their mouths move. It's really weird in the. It's really weird when they talk, except in the modern version. Huh. I, this seems like a good. This seems like a good segue to Metal Gear, though. Jordan, yes. ah, can, I, Metal- can I interest you in a, another? In maybe another not exactly Metal Gear game coming out on the Switch. Uh yeah. Never stop sneaking. It's coming out December fourteenth, which uh, is probably today. If you're listening to this on Thursday, you don't even need to say more. I, say I'm November sold for December. December fourteenth. It's okay. like is a, is a sneaker release. I I'd never even heard of this. And then just on Twitter, they're like, "Oh hey, there's a it's a Metal Gear ripoff, and uh, you have to save uh, Vice President Helicopter, who's literally a helicopter, and uh, you also have to um, you also have to fight like these like really lame." Like bottom of the like bottom rung Metal Gear villains in basically Shadow Moses uh, in basically Shadow Moses, but not really. It's it looks really good. It looks if you haven't watched the trailer, it looks just identical to Metal <laughs> Gear for the for the PlayStation. They even do like the Metal Gear mouth thing where their like mouths don't move, and they just do like this head bob when they're talking. And it's like really a really convoluted plot where you have to save again Vice President Helicopter, and uh, there's. I, I can't, can't like remember all the details other than just we must save Vice President Helicopter. Wait a second, Alex. The make or break question is: Does it have nano machines? <laughs> I, I imagine if it does, it probably it probably puts them on Front Street. Yeah, it's, you got to have your nano machines. I mean, I mean, they gonna, wouldn't say that in the trailer. In the but. first Metal Gear, yeah, it was in the. Oh, okay. the, uh, you're actually, talking about Metal actually, Gear, no, uh, Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, Metal Gear Solid. It, sorry, it's it's a oh. rip off of Metal Gear Solid. Okay, but Metal Gear Solid mentioned nano machines. That was a, like it was a, a very it was like a very small part of the plot, as it should have remained. <laughs> I I object to that statement, Alex. Nano machines are everything. They're they're amazing. You know, that's 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 actually how DNA origami is possible. Nano machines. It is <laughs> it is nano machines actually. It's it's amazing. As soon as, we're, listen- as soon as we're off the pod, and uh, this includes you, the listener, d- definitely go check out "Never Stop Sneaking," and that's uh, with an apostrophe at the end. I did just like drop the G. It's uh, literally it's "Never sneaking. Stop S N E A K A I N" apostrophe, and I don't think it's coming out on anything except for the Switch. And I'm like, I'm really shocked that I'd never heard of this before. But yeah, like just this month, it was announced. And also coming out this month too, which uh, I guess I guess that's kind of a cool strategy because there isn't like this long waiting period. It's like, oh hey, there's this cool game coming out like next week. Well, there'll be a link in the show notes, definitely. Yeah, that's a really cool. <laughs> Where did you even find that? I, I just saw it like on Twitter. Like I I was just like a uh, 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 this writer for Tiny Cartridge, uh, JC Fletcher, is like, oh hey, it's a Metal Gear Solid parody. Then I clicked <laughs> on it and like. Like, is a trailer from the guy who made it. And it's like, oh, yeah, this is coming out on the Switch, like, next week. 
and uh, it had like I don't know, like thirty retweets or something, and it looks totally, it looks totally great. Like if you go, like when I went to the Facebook page, it was like the same deal. Like six people had retweeted it, or it, I like get shared it on Facebook. I I don't know what the numbers are like now, but it's it would be criminal if that game isn't like on the front page of like uh, every Metal Gear fanboys page. Yeah, on YouTube it has nearly eighty nine thousand views, which actually that makes for- me feel a lot better. Well, that that's also that video has been on since October fifth. That is not impressive for that. Oh, yeah, it never stop published October fifth. Yeah. So, but still, I, I would expect like this that did not get good advertising behind it. And, mm, possibly, yeah. I don't know what what's the typical response. How many views are good? A million. A million views. Yeah, more, like, more is better. Yeah, yeah, more is better. But basically, million. A million. I don't know, like, Avengers Infinity Wars, it got 20 million views in 24 hours, I think it was. And that's the biggest movie, uh, like, that'll probably be the highest grossing movie when it's released. And so it seems like if you're one twentieth <laughs> in two months I don't know. of I, what that is. G- game trailers are kind of weird on YouTube anyway, uh, and especially, like, Let's Plays have this problem in spades. If even if the get even if like a a game has like a has like tons of views, it doesn't ever like directly translate to sales in a meaningful way. Like it's usually like uh, usually like the uh, uh, the way it's promoted in its in its, uh, the stores it's sold in is like a bigger factor, or the way it's like written in like Kotaku and like the press. Like usually that has a lot more to do with like the kind of sales they get in terms of like promotion equals sales than YouTube does. Like YouTube's just baffling like how li- little connection there is to this performance on uh, youtube directly correlating to sales so no i, I wouldn't worry about too much okay but, maybe it's not so bad the good thing like, about the, the exceptions that are like maybe like surgeon simulator and goat simulator but <laughs> i mean th- those ones also have like uh, those ones also like just have like appeal outside of outside of youtube and people wrote about it and like yeah. it got promoted on stores like after like the after like the videos exploded so I mean, like, there's there's like the there's like certain things that'll break that formula, but they're not like a, a typical game, like it, just like a JRP, like just a JRPG or like a platformer have like a lot of like let's plays for it on YouTube or like trailers for it. Don't it doesn't mean it's gonna like sell like really super great. Speaking of which, the Robo V Dino trailer I think has like negative six views. <laughs> so search oh. for Robo V Dino on Twitter and uh, g- give it a like. Uh, oh, sorry, not, yeah. not Twitter, YouTube. Yeah, this, is probably like, why it has, this is probably why it has negative six views, because uh, I, I don't know what Twitter and YouTube are. Do you have any other special things you want to suggest for people to hurry up and watch before net neutrality is revoked <laughs> and, and they're no longer allowed because their ISP has a stranglehold on certain things? Uh, <laughs> I, I guess I guess we pr- probably should talk about that. That's going to happen this week, and it's probably like a, at, at this point you're probably uh, uh, either paying for your uh, your enhanced Comcast or Cable One connection to download this podcast. So. Or no, no, no. This is the other thing. Uh, okay, so okay, yeah, it's it, it's stupid that this is still being brought up. So call your congress. Don't even write your congressman anymore, or congresswoman. Call them now. Because it's at that point, uh, and you, uh, <laughs> no, I just can't. there's basically I, nothing that can be there's basically nothing that can be done at this point. Like it's, I mean, you yeah. can you can write your Congress people, but it's, I mean, like it's, it's a, I, I guess I guess that's probably the, I guess that's probably the best thing to do, but like there's, uh, I, I mean, there, uh, it's basically going to happen. Yeah, that that's pretty much it. There's basically like this is always going to happen. And there's basically no way to prevent it because telco because telecoms just have so much power in this country, and like they're just going to get more powerful. Like the their FCC, like the FCC, uh, or maybe it wasn't FCC, maybe it's the FTC, um, is being pushed. Like, uh, no, it was the FCC was it recently FCC, deregulated yes. to uh, um, allow like one uh, outlet to own like mul- like multiple uh, forms of uh, multiple forms of media. So, like for example, a uh, you could uh, like a there could be a single owner of a newspaper and a radio station in like the same town. So, I mean, like 
that that one was the fix is kind of already in with the SEC in terms of de, in terms of like deregulating the favor of telecoms. So mm-hmm. it's like it's not like this wasn't going to happen. And it's even more problematic because the previous um, opposition, like Netflix, Google, Facebook, and everything, that um, opposed it in. I believe it was 2016. They've where, been opposing it. Are, they, what, are well, you saying that they're supporting it now? They're silent on it because they've already made their deals. So, mm. yeah, there, there's not much of a rumble going on for them because they have essentially secured their position, I imagine. like is It's going to cost them, I suppose, more than it would without net neutrality. But I think they're in a... Or, uh, it, or it won't because uh, Comcast will give like Google a break. It's like, hey, you're a massive provider. We could charge you more, but we won't if you promise not to lay broadband in any of our markets. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Google, some of these larger companies can just start doing that. Uh, on the advantage on our side is, okay, oh, pretty, you know, because they go like, oh, we're not, we, we, we'll compete. It'll grow. No, you're not going to compete because there's nothing stopping you from competing now and you're not competing now. The on the good side for the competition is we still have cellular competition, and not really that, though, because I mean Verizon's the biggest broadband provider in the United States too. Well, I uh, no, but I mean that you could get a hold of, of AT and T, Verizon, T Mobile, Sprint, rando person that uses whatever, pop a SIM card into a modem, pay for the unlimited package that some of them that they will be now well that's for. what they do in like guatemala where it's uh net neutrality is not a thing there there is no net neutrality and so mm-hmm. people use multiple sim cards yeah and, and it wasn't, yeah and their phones are but that means that we do have some comp we can get competition it won't be in the wires up to our house but at least we might be able to pull something off. Yeah, this is going to be a problem. I mean, you can try to cope with it and well, it's, it's going can, to happen. It's it's stupid if it does. It's going to happen. It's stupid. I, go support the Electronic Frontier Foundation and all these others. Go call your congressperson. Yeah. Well, we knew this was in the cards when what is his name Anjit or whatever who's Anjit Pai. The, yeah was appointed because that that was explicitly why he was appointed. Yeah, so it's, but, I, I, and there's also like for some reason this time around there's popular support for uh, uh, rescheduling um, uh, ISPs as uh, I think it's taking them away from Title II and assign them as uh, Airnet. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it's I'm not sure if the word service that they use, but they use like a slightly different term that in FCC in FCC speak basically means it's like non-essential and there like shouldn't be any regulation there shouldn't be regulation on that retitling like just like that little change of phrasing is like enough to is just like like enough to basically repeal net neutrality so and there's also like there's like this weird like because it's because it's like happening right now there's like this it's like fueled with like a tiny bit of popular support uh, and when I say popular, I mean like uh, uh, basically like twenty five percent of people that just sit around watching Fox News all day are just like super happy about it. But uh, I, I don't think there's going to be like I don't think that like there's going to be any real reaction to it. We'll basically have to wait for like a shakeup in Congress for it to happen, and there's going to have to be like a very clear like support for this from constituents to make it happen. So it's going to happen now. The real fight's gonna, the real fight's going to be after there's like actually there's there's skin in the game in Congress. And there's and there, there's like there are Congress people that are receptive toward reenacting net neutrality. It's gonna take it's gonna take a lot of work, and it's it's not over. It's not over yet, but right now there's right now there's not much you can do. I do wonder how partisan this issue would even be because I I know on both sides of the political spectrum there's strong opposition to this mm-hmm. because it really only benefits the ISPs. Like it benefits no one else but the ISPs. Mm. It's, it it's really weird. There's there's like this this, this time around and I I don't want to I don't want to bring up the uh, uh, I it, it's not all just exact it's not all propaganda though there there is like this weird propaganda uh like mill that's putting out anti net neutrality stuff that uses exactly the arguments of new, net neutrality. Like just copied and pasted, but it says that like repealing net neutrality will give us net neutrality. It's it's bizarre, but like that's like what's coming out of the propaganda mills. But there's like this, there is like I, I mentioned like specifically like a 
like a tiny, tiny minority is like super in support for this. And I think it's, I think it's more just like a, it's just kind of like a thing of resentment because like the same people that are like very pro net neutrality, uh, like the, are kind of represented as this like political class that's like, uh, that's current, that's this uh, political class that people are resentful toward. So people who don't like Silicon Valley or people who don't like those coastal elites, like this is a, a way that you can like, this is a, like a, a way that angers them. So that makes it a good thing. Like just anything that falls in that category of resentment is popular with a tiny portion of the U S population. So, I mean, as long as, as long as like the, as long as like there's some kind of popular support from those folks, there is still going to be a voice on the other side, but it's just absolutely bizarre. Like, and, uh, it's like coming from perspective that I just don't understand, but that's what the vo- that's what the voice is, and that's what it's saying. Well, the silver lining in all of these things is that this is a real world experiment. So I guess we get to see how this pans out. Well, I also I, we know how it ha- how it pans out. I mean, look at Portugal, or like you you said, Guatemala. <laughs> I, I don't know if Guatemala actually has net neutrality or not. Uh, no, they Portugal don't. Portugal specifically I... has tiered packages, and it's apparently a nightmare. A lot of EU countries actually are not with net net neutrality. It was based on an article I was reading. I can't remember where I read it. I think it was Guardian that I was reading it. But um, yeah, Guatemala. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Guatemala. My memory is not not the <laughs> the most reliable. It is a Central American country. The only Probably the only potential Guatemala. like upside I can see to uh, uh, see to this. Is in the name of accelerationism, it might actually like get some municipalities to say, "Screw it, we're going to have it as a public utility. It's going to be owned by the city." Mm. Yeah, and it's just going to come out. Of, it's going to come out of your. Uh, it's going to come out of your water bill. We'll we'll teach it. We'll teach old people how to use computers, but they're getting aired at. Mm. So, like, that's the only way. That's like the only upside of this I can see. Like, from it's just pure accelerationism because that's going to make seventy five percent of people's li- li- uh, Well, I shouldn't say seventy five percent. Hey, basically, anybody who's go, who's using the internet in any way in the mm-hmm. United States is going to be impacted by it Business in a negative way. Everything. Uh, here's the other thing I, we were thinking or was thinking about before was it. This isn't also it, you know the day it goes through. It's not just going to be oh here's the tears. No, they're going to slowly trickle this in. Mm-hmm. The day after it happens, like see, nothing bad happened. Yeah, kind of. Uh, well, it, it's going to depend on the ISP too, because Comcast said Comcast said that on like this this page that had like this press release about we're not going to we're not going to create tiered setups. Mm-hmm. We're not we're not going to we're basically going to follow the current net neutrality rules. We just want this we just want this piece of uh, this um, FCC requirement uh, taken out. Like the day that they like the day that uh, uh, Ajit Pai. Um, Said that he is the. This is what they're voting on. Comcast like rephrased it, like just changed yeah. that page. So yep. it was it was all of a sudden like much vaguer language. So some uh, ISPs are going to do it like probably day one because they just hate their customers. Uh-huh. But uh, I, it's, and, and there's nothing that the customers can do. But that's the thing is that maybe they will start making their local, you know, you know, start getting their governors and everything. And maybe that's what we need to start doing is start writing the our mayors and all that and start going, Hey, start putting up things in the city. We need these yeah. TV utilities. I, I do wonder. I forgot, the... on, uh, I forgot who said it on uh, a Twitter, but someone posted that the first person that runs on the platform of, do you hate your cable company is going to be in Congress for 50 years. Oh, I totally believe it. Oh, they, they could probably end up being be forced into presidency for more than. I, I mean, it was, it was kind of a joke tweet, but nobody likes their cable company. I mean, if, if, if they like either for billing reasons or it, like, it's just the ultimate example of like, uh, uh, I guess, uh, I guess cable companies are just kind of their own thing. Cause they're like, uh, they're kind of like a privately held utility that's mm-hmm. held by many hands. And there isn't anything exactly like it that impacts lives to a person's daily life so much. And it just causes so much anger. I, I really think if someone said, do you hate your cable company? I'll help fix it. They would probably get elected. The yeah. thing that I do not like, the the thing I like least about them is that when you call their customer service and complain, it actually gets them excited and they start feeling their nipples. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we all watched that South Park episode. <laughs> Good times. Yeah. Uh, he's probably actually getting close to the end. But there was one thing you wanted to ask me. 
I knew you were going to bring it up. You couldn't resist Star Wars, right? Yes. Yeah. What do you think? It, it's getting good reception. Does that impress you? Does it? I already bought my ticket. doesn't matter. Yeah. I, I Actually, I'm ignoring all that. I don't want to. People say Mark Hamill. Pretty good. I, I, don't, I don't care. I'm going to go watch it. I paid my $30. I'm going to go watch my movie. I'm going to get my six extra minutes of footage. You know, <laughs> they may insert another Frozen short in that movie. Right? I think they're going to do that with every Disney movie now. Why not? Just, I'll, I'll just you'll take have it. to watch your 20-minute Frozen. I'll watch my 20-minute Frozen. My six extra minutes of footage that you're not going to get to watch because you're not coming to my $30 preview. I'll be at Lady Gaga. Oh, yeah. You get uh, to go watch. I get to preview that. Yeah. Or just view. Yeah, I was going to say view. Yeah. Yeah, see, I'm actually getting the early showing, so it's not kind of a preview. Yeah. There's no early showings for this. No. It's that that would have been like the first showings back on the beginning of this. Now, there the are concert. earlier showings, but yeah. then this becomes a philosophical question. Mm-hmm. What's the earliest when she per- first put on a show, when she was singing in front of her family? No. Yeah. When she was singing in front of the mirror? She gave her own first earliest showing to herself. Well, there's that, but I meant for like this. Yeah, like you could go the first showing is the preview showing. Yeah, or in that show. location. <laughs> yeah, why not? Because people have seen it. Uh, but oh, my my deal. Hmm. It's not terrible. It's thirty dollars. Yeah, but it's not terrible. Nobody's buying tickets, so I have I have multiple reasons why this is this thirty dollars is not terrible. One, nobody's buying tickets. I'm gonna have a fairly okay theater spacing wise for a star wars movie opening night are you gonna unzip and relax no 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 just no oh just no how about that okay. but i'm gonna it's gonna i'm gonna have it's not, it's not gonna be super packed for star wars it's usually super packed okay mm-hmm. thing, i get a free regular popcorn hey i get star wars cards trading cards i get a lanyard i get stuff lanyards are my favorite i know I am actually going to come out of this movie, especially with the movie ticket and everything, positive, actually, with how much all of these little things cost. Mm. Yeah. Are you going to have extra butter on that popcorn? I don't know, maybe. At no cost? Maybe. Or additional cost? I, I'm, I'm so-so on the butter. Uh, but I have my own personal regular popcorn. You know, people call me strange for this, and when I say people, I, I'm actually exaggerating. No one's called me strange for this. But you're strange I, for this. Okay. I don't you. know what this is yet, so, but you're so strange. You, you retroactively but made me not strange. a liar. Okay. Yeah. So I, I like to put enough butter on my popcorn that it is actually soggy. It's almost mm. a pile of mush. Interesting. And I know this is not good for me, but I'm eating buttery popcorn, so... It's so okay. the butter is so-so with me. I, I, this is my bad part. I like the uh, so, uh, the seasonings, and they're usually extra salty, mm. usually. Do you put Tabasco sauce on your popcorn? I have not tried that. That would be strange. I haven't tried it either. No. Nah. I actually used to do that at my old uh, my old job. Uh, they had a popcorn machine at the uh, – uh, they had a popcorn machine there, and I, just, I didn't, don't really like popcorn – so I try to find something to do to the popcorn to make myself like it more because it's <laughs> it's free food. I mean, you can't say no, right? Mm. And uh, yeah, I would I would just totally like dump Tabasco and popcorn, and it's not too bad. The the only problem is it makes the popcorn kind of wet. So like nah. you're better off like with like a with like a dry spicy powder. But yeah, popcorn's like uh, like a popcorn's pretty good with uh, with spiciness attached to it. So you'd recommend it? Yeah, I'd say so. Yes, I. Since you like your soggy popcorn, yeah. I do like my soggy popcorn. I'm not sure if I would like it soggy with spiciness, but... Spicy, I, soggy I'm, spice? I might give it spicy a shot. Uh, maybe maybe lightly... Maybe maybe get like a handful of kernels and yeah. try it out. Why not? Don't knock it till you try it, unless it's yeah. murder. Then then don't try that. Actually, there's plenty of stuff I wouldn't try. Yeah, I, I agree. But there's definitely one. Though. But I'll try the popcorn. And like try sriracha. the show. Maybe it'll Yeah, maybe a sriracha. Sriracha. Mm. Sriracha. I can't say that word. Sriracha. That's, yeah. Sriracha. Say Sriracha. <laughs> um, yes. So next week, we'll talk about Star Wars, but not spoil the Star Wars. Okay. Are you going to watch Star Wars? You bet I am. I actually... Are you going to watch it before a month is up? Last time, you didn't want to. What? You you and Joe were like, we're not watching I it I watched it. 
open well no 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 um i do believe or did you guys go with me for that first showing no no i we didn't go first showing because it was too crowded but um i believe we did watch it within the first week of release it's just okay. that it was initially so crowded and yeah. um i didn't want to deal with that um i'm going to endeavor to watch it uh now that finals are about over for hey. me and i can do productive things at <laughs> last yes. like watch movies and so, yeah, I plan on watching that and Justice League, even though I'm, I, I have my reservations. Oh, you still haven't watched that. I haven't watched it well, yet. I haven't watched Coco, so there you go. I think that you're missing out more than I'm missing out. I think you're missing out a lot. I, well, not for long for either of us, I guess, no. because yeah, I plan on watching Justice League, and you better be watching Coco. It's good for you. <laughs> It'll invigorate your soul and your, your perception of the world. Can you give me a warm, fuzzy feeling. It will give you that. It Ooh. will actually give you a hot fuzzy. Thing. Oh, that's, that's pleasantly like hot. Fuzzy. Okay. All right. Um, oh, and because I just like talking about Movie Pass, mm -hmm. go check out Costco because they've released an annual price ninety dollars. That saves you three months of it. And that's pretty good. Um, and it will also get you out in case they end up jacking up the prices for you watching it too much. You know, we're not sponsored by Movie Pass or Costco, but I kind of wish so because we talk about Movie Pass all the time because they're awesome. I know. Yeah, I I would feel fine being sponsored by them because I could be the honest guy saying I love Movie Pass. Yeah, yeah. I said we're the honest people saying it. So I just no, I was just going like, hey, take advantage of this because before it was like take advantage because be an early person, get in before your theaters go or AMC or somebody goes up. Oh, we can't <laughs> support it now. Get in while you can get this advantage because the theaters aren't able, aren't, you know, like AMC's not getting out of it. Mm. They're, they're finding their loopholes a little bit here and there by like, oh, up charges or other things. But the, in there, they have, uh, Movie Pass has been changing their terms of agreement and they have written in there that if you watch it too many times, it used to say they will shut off your account. Mm. Now it says they may push you or that they will push you to a higher. Thing. What movie pass? Yes. Oh, okay. Already they're renegotiating there. They have not created these plans. Also, uh -huh. like the annual one, they talked about the fact that the annual one was going to exist. They're like, when the annual exists, this is you know you these will be the things. Uh -huh. If you get it on the annual, so you'll have paid everything up front. It they can't really push your next billing higher because you're already in okay. your annual contract. It's a disturb, uh, disturbing sign of things to come though, because once that annual has been used up, then you'll... You have to sign right. up for the higher one. Right. And so, okay, I can see how this is going. The The movie pass was too good to be true. Yeah. Was, Actually, I'm kind of curious how it's going to work, because you, you cancel your movie pass, because to get this annual one, you have to cancel your movie pass. But if you cancel your movie pass, you can't sign up for nine months. I've been hearing people have been doing it okay. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Counseling and then re-signing up through mm -hmm. Costco. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you have to sign up through another email address. We only, you know, everyone only has, like, what, five when email they addresses? they know your credit card, though, is like, hey. This I'm using, well, you also can do use PayPal. And I'm using the same credit card oh. in two accounts. Okay. But there's also talk of maybe a family plan coming around, hmm. which is nice because one card for, so, like, okay, here's for the child, here's for the other child. Here's for the mom. Here's for the dad. Here's for the cousin. Here's the yeah. Everyone has to have their own card right now. Okay. Well, now I am endorsing Movie Pass with a hint of caution. Mm. Right. I'm like they need to uh, make money. Well, they're supposed to make money by being Big Brother and spying on us and selling no, our information. No, they can only make so much. They stay, they have identified they have to make it off of because the average uh, movie cost is like seven or eight dollars. So or elsewhere? Oh no no, I, yeah, nationwide. Talking nationwide, not here <laughs> in Pocatell, Idaho, or Iro Falls, or where else? Where they're like somewhere between ten to twenty dollars. Talking about like yeah. nationwide, the and also I think that that is also counting in the dollar theaters. Mm. So nationwide, the average movie theater cost is about eight dollars. Mm. So if you go watch it once a month, you are actually losing money. Mm. On the average, mm -hmm. if you watch it more than once a month, you are taking advantage on the average mm -hmm. in places like here, watching the movie once, just once, yeah. just once, you are getting advantage. That is very true. 
except for matinees. I it well, is yeah, actually, except for matinees or special days or anything where they do massive discounts. It legitimately bothered me the first second time I used Movie Pass. It was on is incidentally on a matinee. I wasn't deliberate, or ah. is a cheap Tuesday yep. night, mm-hmm. and yeah, I, they you told were me. Sad. Yeah, well, I wanted to ask if they could make it more expensive. For me. <laughs> like, I want to charge this company that's helping me out so much. Well, yeah, because they're actually scanning in points at that. At that See, point. now you can't make points off anymore. I know, and it's not AMC; it's Movie Pass. Oh. It's in their terms of agreement now. That you can't make you cannot points. you cannot do use it for more than just watching the movie. Oh, you cannot be getting points. Why wouldn't oh because of people like me who would say I want to go to the most expensive version of that movie. Maybe yeah, that's, that's that would probably be the reason. So yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff with it. But yeah, and I, I they have been updating their terms of agreement. They've been sending out they, uh, instead of being the company that's hiding it. They send out emails going, "We have updated." They just say stuff in the app. There's all this, so it's not. And it's not that hard to find. Like, and it's not the complex terms of agreement. Like, I was like, "All right, fine, I'll go look at this." And I started scrolling through. I was like, "Actually, this is pretty straightforward." And this is like that nine month thing. Mm-hmm. That's like top line. They don't even mess around with that. They're like, "We are letting you know right now. If you cancel your account, you can't sign up for nine months. You're out." Like first thing, they don't even. Jo- There's like, we're not going to hide this. We're letting you know. You can't show up with a fake mustache and say, "Come on, guys." Let me sign up again. Yeah, let's see the other email address. But yeah, we're over now. Okay. So, famous last words. Go, Alex. Uh, Check out "Never Stop Sneaking." It looks really good. At least watch the trailer. Oh yeah, word match. Schadenfreude. AMC Movie Pass. Uh, Pokemon has a new update, and there's Christmas special. Yay! 